the wildest games I've coached where we, we had everything clicking defensively, offensively, ball moving, taking care of the ball, extra shots, 50-50 balls. And then 12 minutes later, they had everything. And then we didn't have anything in that third quarter. And then defensively in the fourth quarter, we, we woke up and made them take a lot of tough shots. And some of the, even the, some of the shots that we wanted them to make, they unfortunately made some of those shots. But I thought we did a much better job of attacking and taking care of the ball in that fourth quarter. But it was, it was definitely a crazy game. A lot of, a lot of like Neto, I thought Neto was, Neto and Gaff were, not, I don't even know if they were like low key uh, game ball winners tonight. They, 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 it was obvious what the impact that they had. They both changed the game. Uh, when they were their minutes on the floor, but it was we needed everything, every single one of their minutes. And the way you guys closed, I believe it was a twenty-five to ten run at the end. Um, just how about the big shots your your star players were making? Yeah, I mean that's that's the that's the beauty of being a star. I mean I've never been one, except for you know, maybe in high school, where you can have a an average or a below average game for three quarters, and then have a great six minutes and, and take over a game. And we have two guys that can do that. Neither of them, I don't think, played particularly well. It's crazy to say that when Russell gets 20 rebounds and 10 assists, but he's had better games. And, but they, they, they stepped up. He made big plays on both ends, rebounding, passing, attacking, layups. And then Brad was really patient on his stuff and got to the line, got to the free throw line, got to the, to the key. But they both made huge plays, and that's what that's what star players do. They make huge plays down the stretch, and and the the stars in their other guys are stars in their roles tonight. I thought Gaff, like I said, Gaff and and um, Neto were outstanding. Matt, yeah, Scott, just following up on that, what did you make of the way that? Uh, just like what allows Russell to do that when he has a subpar game for three quarters, but yet takes over kind of in the fourth. He's had, he has a memory bank and he knows, he knows he's been through a lot of tough games. I've said that many times. Look what, look, look what he's done in big games and in playoff series at a young age. Not a lot of guys have done that. Only thing he hasn't, he hasn't done. I mean, we were together. We went to the finals at the youngest team and he had a lot of incredible moments. He doesn't ever let the moment bother him. There's no moment big, bigger than his, his his mindset, and that's what that's what he's instilling in all of us. I mean, he, we know we know we've we've had a lot of stuff happen to us and injuries. And you know, Danny's out. You know, you know, with his injury now, it's just part of what we've doing what we've going through this year. But the constant with our two our two leaders have done a great job of kind of like settling us down and understanding that this is what it is and we don't have we can't have a pity party you just got to fight through it but Russell's a big time winner a big time not not even I mean he's a big time basketball player and winner on and off the court yeah and what did you make of uh, Denny's injury just to see if that happened um, time to go down don't know what it is now I mean they're they're gonna look at it I'm sure they're gonna look at some more testing tomorrow I don't know exactly what it is I don't want to you know, speculate now. I will talk to him after. Sure. Well, we should put it out there. So it's possible. Thanks. What, what did Wolf say? Uh, done for the season, fractured ankle. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks. What does Sham say? He's not on it yet. Okay. Fred. No, no Scott, Does I was. My daughter report anything yet? Because she's usually pretty good at that stuff, too. I haven't seen him make the rounds on Twitter yet. All right. Um, no, I was just wondering if you could speak to uh, the impact that Denny has made during his rookie season. Well, it's, it's not, we don't know if it's over yet. One thing about Denny, two, two things about Denny that I love. He cares a lot and he works extremely hard. And those are two characteristics that we want our program to be about and he's about those things has he had an up and down year absolutely you look at all the great rookies all the great players in the league the in for the 
MVPs in the league. Look at their rookies years. It's no different. Sometimes we put so much pressure on all these players to be 27-year-olds right away. And Rui's no different. These guys that care, they work hard. That's all I care about. My job is to get them better. Some nights they look really good. Some nights I screw them up. Uh, but that's part of coaching. It's part of growing. It's part of being a player. Denny cares and he and he works hard and, and he's an outstanding kid. And we, we're lucky to, to have him on our team and we're going to keep getting them better. I don't know what's, what his rest of his year will be. I'm hoping for the best. Um, but I don't know as of right now. But, you know, coaching is developing guys and trying to figure out how you put them in place. I messed up on Rolo tonight. I'll be the first to admit. It was one of his first games that he's had a – not a roller like game, but it wasn't his fault. It was my fault. I put him in some situations that it wasn't good for him. But he'll bounce back. Kellen. Hey, Scott. We've been asking about fans for the past week or so. So now – now they're like about 2,000 fans were back. What was it like being in the arena with the home fans? Incredible, you know, incredible. You know, you want them to see our team. Our team needs needs it. And I think what they what they what they can see with our team is the resolve and the resiliency and and a team that they can be proud of. We play hard, and you know, and we don't make excuses. And that's what we're about. It's and, and that's hard to do. Trust me, it's hard to do when we have really good players and a lot of things happen and and it seems like every every other night there's a little there's a punch in the stomach and we have them we have them all over our bodies, but we never make excuses. We just keep chucking away and how who's playing in the starting lineup. You know, Rui will be back soon, so I don't know what, what that will look like. Um, but we got to make another decision probably tomorrow with another starting lineup. But you got to embrace it. You got to enjoy it and embrace it and have fun with it. And I think our guys have done that and they're serious about it. They're not just having fun, just playing, you know, let anything happen the way it's, you know, just go out there and just, we're trying to make it happen the right, in the right way. And, and our leaders have done a great job of helping, uh, helping us keep charging forward. Christos. And having having Bertans back is huge, guys. I mean, he's been out with his his calf, but he's that's behind him, and his you know his child was born, but he's back, and just him on the court is such a a huge uh, difference. I mean, he's difference maker, and it was it was great to have him back to back to back what back to back uh, ten double digit threes attempts and those are good he's going to make a majority of them if he keeps getting that many attempts hello coach congratulations on the win would like to ask you what did you like most on the way that uh, your team closed the game tonight and how big was the impact of daniel gafford not only tonight but also in the in his whole uh, games with the team he, he's getting better he's getting better i mean that's we've only had him i mean i know we had a it's basically a pseudo practice yesterday, but he's he's we love him. I love him. I can't I can't I, I love coaching him. I love what he brings. He got tired twice tonight. One time at the very end of the game, I said, I don't care how tired you are. You got another two minutes into it. You got to just give anything you have and we'll meet at the plane tomorrow. So you don't have to worry about, you know, practicing. And but he he's he's athletic. He can get. He has great hands. Obviously, Russ and Brad and our playmakers have uh, Ish has good synergy with him, and they throw it up to him. We can throw some bad passes, and he can catch them. And we know Russell throws some bad passes now. He's and he goes out there and gets them. Um, but I like I like I like what he brings. It's a, Tommy did a great job of you know picking him up. Ava. Um, Scott, Steph was, I think, seven for 25 tonight. What did you like about the way you guys defended him? You obviously missed a lot, but it looked like uh, he was working to get some of those shots. Well, that's the that's the thing that that Russell probably won't get a lot of credit for, but he did a great job of guarding them, putting pressure on them, making them take tough shots, making them, 
making him go to his second and third options. It wears him out. I mean, I know he's been on a long, they've been on a long road trip and he runs, you know, forever and he doesn't seem to ever get tired, but you know, every now and then an amazing player like Steph will have an off game and a lot to do with it was, was Russell. And there's some, some of the things that we got lucky. He missed some, some, some ones that he normally makes. If we saw the last, you know, 10 games, you've seen those, you know, the last, 10 threes, 11 threes, four threes, 10 threes, 11 three makes. Those are incredible numbers in the last five or six games. But Russell did a, did a great job. He doesn't get enough credit for the defense because he can, he switches and his man, you know, we don't, I don't know what the numbers are always are, these, all the numbers that people throw at me, but he can guard one through four as well as any guard in the league. And you talk about absorbing punches, but how does, all the things that you guys have been through this year um, prepare you for potentially losing another guy to injury, even if it's just mentally being saying, okay, we've been through something like this before we can do it again. Um, it remains to be seen, but I know in the group, knowing the resiliency and the resolve and the toughness and the determination that we have, we're just going to keep, we're going to keep fighting back. And sometimes, you know, that's the, sometimes that's the only way to be. And all these guys, Every coach, everybody in our organization, they got to this level through adversity, through fighting over and climbing over it and punching through it, whatever you want to do, you have to get to here. You got you to gotta fight. And I think we got a group that's going to continue to do that. We have to, we, we talked to them after the game real quick. We got to stay hungry. You know, I know we won six in a row, but it has nothing to do with our next game. Uh, we got to have that same mentality. Next man up next game up and then and then live with the results and I know knowing I know what I know about the group that's what they're going to do I don't know who we're going to start I don't know Rui's situation uh, but our staff they will be creative and try to find ways and matchups that we can take advantage of and put us in a position to win all right last question Chase <laughs> Scott, just wondering, I know earlier this season after a crazy game, you said you needed a, a white claw. Was this a white claw game? Oh, man, I don't know. I don't – I've tried to stop. <laughs> but uh, grapefruit's going to be pretty good tonight. <laughs> Might be double-fisted tonight. No, um – this, trust me, this was a this was a strange game. I've coached a lot of a lot of games and a lot of crazy games, but this game, the way we started, I thought we were gonna be in a position to feel pretty good throughout the game. But it flipped quickly, and they got confident and they got hot and they were running. And the crazy thing is, Steph wasn't even really in the game. These other guys, Kelly Kelly had an amazing game. Jordan had an amazing game. And Draymond, I know he doesn't score a lot. But that guy is one of the biggest winning basketball players in the league. I have a big respect for him and how he plays. And it was nice that he got in the, uh, fouled out in the last, you know, few possessions of the game because that did definitely help. How would you guys close out that game? I believe it was a 25 to 10 run uh, there to the buzzer. Well, uh, resiliency. You know, we uh, fought through a lot throughout the game um, and just stuck with it, defended our ass off. The whole night, we had some stretches where we didn't do so well. Um, but I thought we defended what we needed to, uh, especially if we started the game, uh, we closed the game as well. And um, speaking of that, your coach just said that you deserve a lot more credit than you get for your defense, and, and specifically tonight with the way you defended Steph Curry. Uh, what was your approach against him tonight? And do you agree with, with Scott that you, you feel like you should get more credit for your defense? You know what? I, I definitely. I mean, I like I said, I feel like I'm a player that uh, can do it all defend, score, whatever it is that needs to be done. Uh, my job changes every night, and I feel like I'm one of, one of the, those players that if I need to defend at a high level, I can do that too. If I need to score at a high level, I can do that. Pass, I can do that. Rebound, I can do that. Woman to coach, shit, I can do that too. You know, uh, you know, I just feel like I can do everything, and that's uh, been blessed to be able to play the game. And tonight, um, yeah, I, t I definitely took pride in, in defending and making sure that, uh, you know, Steph's been on a high streak. Um, he's been playing very well. And I, I took the challenge um, to start the game and make sure that, you know, he can see his streak on us tonight. Ava. 
Russ, you had a couple of fans with a welcome Russell Westbrook banner in the corner there. What was it like your first game in front of uh, fans here in D.C.? I was great, man. The fans are uh, amazing. Good energy. I know they were excited to kind of just get get into the arena and watch some basketball. Uh, so happy that we were able to, to, to bring home the victory. I look forward to some more home games and, uh, you know, getting more people in the arena and getting the fans more excited, excited about the things uh, in the near future for us. And we've asked Scott this, but with this stretch going so well for you guys, eight of the last nine, do you feel like this team can still improve? Where do you feel like the ceiling is for this group? Uh, we just take one game at a time. It's part of my job as a leader to make sure that our guys in the locker room understand we take one game at a time. We can't look too far ahead, look back at the game. This game is over tonight. It's over. Uh, now we got to get our minds and ready for, for Oklahoma coming up, and uh, that's all we can worry about. DA. Uh, Russ, you, you've you've been on teams that kind of were already in the playoffs at this point in the season. <laughs> um, but what is the line on to take it back to maybe your first couple of years in OKC when you guys were young and you were just starting to what what happens when a team really starts to believe in itself and starts to think that it, it really is as good as as people outside say they are, and, and maybe it all comes together. I uh, mean, it's a, it's a great thing. You know, I, I believe in confidence, um, instilling confidence in other people, um, instilling, making them feel great about themselves, their game. Um, and when the collectively as a team, you feel like you can do anything, um, anything's possible. And I really believe that. Um, and I always have uh, since I got in the league, regardless of kind of the situation, you always uh, want to be confident regardless of what's happening and keep your mind in a positive way. And just tonight, what what were you guys able to do to kind of turn Poole's water off and to, tune uh, Ubre's water off a little bit down the stretch? Uh, be more physical, uh, be more physical, lock in a little bit, made them shoot tougher shots. They were getting some easy looks, um, some dunks, and easy wide open threes. Uh, you know, they're good players and uh, did a good job of locking in defensively, especially for the last five minutes. Fred. Hey, Russell. Um, with Denny's injury tonight, I'm, I'm just wondering from your perspective, what, what has he been like for you guys off the court? What's his locker room presence been like? What's, what's your personal relationship like with him? Uh, Denny's been amazing. You know, he's been great. And what, and what was your reaction just to seeing him, you know, a young guy in his first year go down like that? Uh, my first reaction um, is, is to pray for him, uh, to pray for him and his mental wellness, um, because that's it's going to get him through these tough times. And uh, our job is to make sure we support him. Matt? Hey, Russ. Uh, Scott was saying that, you know, your experience really helps late in games. And I was just wondering, as a guy who's been in a lot of big games, how, how do you think it kind of helped weather the storm in this one and helped pull it out? Well, you know, I take pride in clutch moments. Um, I take pride in, in, in making the right plays down the stretch. I take pride in the last five minutes of games, um, making big shots, making big plays. Um, and that's something that I've done, you know, and, career. But go ahead, Matt. Oh, yeah. Um, you actually lead the NBA in clutch uh, field goal percentage in, in the oh, last five minutes. Really? Yeah. Ah, that's interesting. <laughs> I didn't uh, know that. Yeah. Um, just so, what do you make of that? Oh, I know what I do. I ain't worried about what <laughs> nobody else thinking. <laughs> That's one thing about me. It doesn't really matter what nobody else thinks, you know. But it's okay, you know. Just keep doing what I'm doing. Keep my head straight and just keep hooping. That's all I can do. Thanks. Thanks, man. And last question to Christos. Hello, Russ. Congratulations on the win. What do you like most on the way that you respond in the last, uh, last six minutes of the game? Um, I like the way we uh, came together. Uh, we didn't put our head down. It just shows the, the growth of our team from the start of the season till now. Um, early in the season, we kind of we lost this game. Uh, but tonight, we stuck together. We fought. Uh, we got stops on demand, uh, which is very important in this league to get um, and rebound the basketball and obviously made plays on the stretch. As a team, do you feel that you play the, the best basketball of the season at this point of the season? Uh, I'm not sure. You know, we, we just trying to take one game at a time. Like I said, I, my job is to make sure that we constantly take one game at a time. It's not going to get easy for us. It's going to get tougher. And we got to make sure we control our own destiny and uh, just take one game at a time and take care of business.
What did you like most on the way that you react, on the way that you respond in the last six minutes, and what it means the, that way for your team? Um, really just coming back in with a, a clear conscience, clear mind. You know, it was a lot of aggravation with me tonight, obviously, because, of, you know, some of the things that wasn't going my way, but I can't really just let that cloud my thinking or cloud my play or anything like that. So, you know, I had guys on the bench and stuff. They were just really getting me out of my own head. You know, it's a mental game sometimes, and just really just making sure your mental is clear. One of the main things that can help you on the floor, and that's what I did. Thank you very much. Chase. Hey, man, uh, before this game, you know, we asked you what was the key to defending Steph Curry, and you guys did a pretty good job, 18 points, 2 of 14 from 3. So what do you think uh, made you guys successful against him? Um, really just making him play inside the three-point line. And being as aggressive as we can with him coming off the screens, you know, sometimes, you know, it was kind of, you know, we was messing up on most of the possessions that, you know, him coming off the screens, you know, he went two for 14. So luckily he, that actually happened. But other than that, really just, you know, running him off the three point line. He is a knockdown shooter from deep and we just had to make sure, you know, he didn't get none of those shots off. Um, like I said, to make him play inside, making him finish it and finishing over contact, anything like that, and, you know, help us out in it. And I don't know if we've asked you this yet, but um, what's it like playing with Russell Westbrook uh, as just a young player? And, and now you've played, I think, nine games with him. What, what are your impressions of being his teammate? Oh, uh, well, tonight, you know, um, he was for sure making sure I was locked into the game because, you know, it was a lot. Like I said, it was a lot of things that was going through my mind mentally that I wanted to do better on the floor. And with him just, you know, being in my ear most of the game, it really just helped me be able to, like, lock in most of the time. So having that leadership role on my side is really, like, really a great thing because, you know, he does what he does. You know, he goes out, gets his triple double, but he makes sure the team stays locked in, too. You know, he gets everybody going. He brings the energy, and he brings that leadership role that we need. Ava? Um, Daniel, you guys uh, obviously had fans in the arena. It wasn't a full crowd, of course, but how much of a difference does it make? Do, do the 2,000 fans, can you can you feel it out there? Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, any fan now, because, like, it's been so long that we hadn't had fans anywhere I've been. Like, I was in Chicago. We barely had – we didn't have fans there either. We just had, like, the family in the, um, in the suites up top. But coming here and having at least, you know, a good amount here, uh, 2,000 that was here, I mean, you still felt the energy, even though it wasn't that many people here. You know, um, the, the fans are always going to come in and show their support and give as much energy as they possibly can. We can't do nothing to feed off of it. So, I mean, I'm grateful. I'm glad we finally got him back in the gym. I know it's been a long time coming. I know it's been frustrating, but we're finally back. Kellen. Hey, Daniel, there was a scary moment with Denny going down with apparently, you know, what looked like a pretty bad leg injury. I guess, you know, you've had leg injuries yourself. What was, you know, what went through your mind when you saw that? What did you see? And have you talked to him and um, since the gate, since that happened? Um, I, I seen him, you know, in the back as I was getting like tested for my COVID test and stuff, just seeing him, you know, walking on it and stuff and just like with his crutches and whatnot. I didn't actually see the injury though. I just, I was, I think I turned around and seen that he was on the floor because I think I was getting back on defense, but I seen he was on the floor and I was like, oh man. So it's just, you know, seeing a guy go down like that, it's real scary. You know, you never know what's going to happen. You never know if it's going to be bad or it's going to be good. It's just seeing him down on the floor as long as that, you know, I felt his pain. I mean, I understand, you know, it's going, it's going to be a long road of recovery, but, you know, the trainers that we got and stuff, you know, he's, he's going to be, he's in good hands. So they're going to take care of him. But, you know, yeah, it's a tough, it's a tough blow for us right now because, of, you know, he's going to be, I'm pretty sure he's going to be out for a good amount of time. But, you know, it's, it's tough. <laughs> it's real tough. I, I can't really explain it. Um, the ankle injury is like one of the worst injuries to me because, I mean, I've been through it. But, you know, just seeing a guy like that, especially since he, he's a rookie. I think he's a rookie, right? Okay, yeah. Since, <laughs> since, you know, him being a rookie and stuff, going down like that is just tough. Thank you. And last question to Matt. Hey, uh, Daniel. Uh, the, the Wizards are 8-1 and one when, when you play. And I'm just wondering, you know, since coming in of the trade deadline, like, what is it like to be on a team? Or what can, what can it do for a team to, to maybe have that, that missing piece, so to say, or, or a guy who can – really, really swing a season? I mean, and also, do you think you're having that sort of impact? Oh, um, I mean, I'm just coming in and doing what I do, just really just making sure my energy is contagious, you know, 
um, having a guy come in like me, you know, with the uh, with like the mindset of defense at first, offense second. I mean, that's that can be a big thing for a team. You know, I'm not coming in and just like, oh, I'm the change, I'm this, I'm that. No, I'm just coming in and just playing my game and whatnot. People can say what they want to say. You know, they're, we're eight and one with me, anything like that. But my mindset is, you know, just coming in and working. You know, it's all it's a team thing. You know, I understand that, like, you know, we're winning and certain things like that. But it's, I feel like it's just not one person. It's, it's everybody on the team, you know, from Russ to the last guy on the bench, you know, especially, you know, we bring energy off the bench. We bring energy to the court, bring energy throughout the team. So, Not so much about the game, but obviously you are somebody that had to deal with unfortunate injuries early in your career, lower leg injuries. Not sure if you had a chance to talk to Denny or anything yet, but – in the future, what would you maybe express to him to try and help him through this unfortunate process? Uh, first, praise my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Um, uh, that's tough. I mean, I, I don't exactly know the extent of his injury, um, but I talked to him a little bit after the game. He was in good spirits. He was, he was energetic. He's happy we won. Um, but I mean, my advice is, is, I mean, the same I would give myself when I was a rookie, you know, just understand your body's growing. There's going to be some ups and downs, you know, there's going to be a lot of stuff you can control, can't control, um, you know, his injury. I'm not sure how he landed or, you know, what the case may have been. Some stuff is out of his control, but uh, a lot of stuff with me, it was uh, more or less kind of my body's growth and maturity, um, getting used to uh, so many games that we play and so many nights and you know you go from 30 games in college to 82 in a league and uh, it's just a significant jump um, so for me it was just getting acclimated and getting adjusted you know I don't I know it'll be the same for him it's the same for every player that comes into the league but uh, for the most part just staying positive knowing that you know you can come back on the other side of this you know a better player uh, and even stronger with your body. Ava. Brad, you were someone who was kind of adamant earlier in the year that you didn't really want fans back in the arena until everything was safe. Now that obviously numbers are better, the city said it was okay. How meaningful was it um, to have everybody back and then cheering for you, especially in a game like tonight? Well, it's always great uh, for me, especially just being able to see my family, uh, seeing my wife, my two boys, and my brother and his wife. Uh, it's always it's always great to be able to see family uh, and and to be able to have fans for once is definitely felt different, uh, but it was exciting. You know, we missed it. Uh, I think it definitely played in our favor down the stretch. Uh, and we need that, you know, we need that energy. You know, it's just an extra boost for us uh, to continue to go out and play hard. And there was obviously so much going on for you guys down the stretch. Uh, Davis with Draymond going out with you and, and Russ attacking the rim. What's the kind of thing that you felt like really sealed it for you guys? Uh, it was our stops. We got stops at the end of the game. Uh, it it kind of got ugly. We were getting back door like three or four times in a row. Uh, and they were getting layups and dunks. And it was, it was just looking like we were kind of falling apart a little bit. But we did a good job of just sticking with it, uh, you know, cleaning some things up and being better on that end uh, and rebounding the ball. And ultimately, I think Russ's attack and the transition kind of kept us in the game offensively. Uh, you know, he was able to attack, get us get us to five fouls and put us in the bonus pretty early in the fourth. So, uh, you know, that was, that was very beneficial for us moving down the stretch. And, uh, we all just made plays and contributed down the, uh, down the stretch on offense to, to be able to contribute to the win. DA. Brad, the, the team's defensive numbers the last two months are pretty, pretty good. Top 10 across the board. And I'm wondering, is it communication? Is it just getting playing with having your, your regular rotation back? Why do you think the defense has gotten so much better? Uh, a little bit of everything, DA. Uh, you know, I think if you'd asked me like a month or two ago, like we 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 were still down. Uh, we were still trying to figure out guys' minutes, getting guys back healthy. And, uh, you know, it's kind of a little rocky. Uh, but now, you know, we kind of, after the deadline, you always know, you know, this is a team you're, you're with. Nobody's leaving. You know, nobody's come, coming back. Uh, so, you know, it's just, you know, this is what we got. Let's rock with it. So, you know, after the, after after All-Star break, you know, we realized that. And, you know, we, we kind of came out in a little slump, but uh, we got ourselves out of it. You know, we got back in the gym. You know, we dedicated ourselves. 
um, to our craft and getting better. But we honestly take it a day at a time. You know, I think that's been the biggest difference for us. We don't look too far ahead. Um, we don't worry about, you know, what happened in the past. We just control the day by day things that we can, uh, you know, whether that's getting better on the off day or, you know, coming in on game day ready to go. So uh, we just keep building on our last game and, and just never get tired of uh, doing what's right and having success with it. Do you think that shows up in a game like tonight where even, you know, you guys were concentrating on Steph, but you were able to turn off Poole's water. You were able to turn off Kelly's water in the fourth quarter. Yeah, I mean, it's it's, it's a will and a want, you know, uh, as an individual player and as a team. You know, we have to individually be able to accept that challenge and say, my man isn't going to score. It's going to be a tough night for him. Uh, and I would say like Russ with, with Steph tonight, like Russ like made it his mission and challenge to make it really tough on Steph make it tough on his catches, make it tough on pin downs. Uh, and we all did, you know, we all followed suit with that, you know, and then once Jay, Jay Poole got going, Kelly was got going, uh, you know, we all kind of, you know, looked at ourselves and we were like, okay, we got to be better. We got to get stops. And, and that's, that's a big sign of growth for us. You know, we were in timeouts on the floor. We were able to just adjust on the fly and, uh, and be better than what we were. Chase. Um, yeah, Brad, Coach Brooks said that this was uh, one of the wildest games he's ever coached, and he's coached quite a few of them. How would you just kind of sum up uh, all the craziness that went down tonight? Uh, I didn't think it was that crazy. I think it was – I just thought it was a good game. Uh, it was a lot of uh, maybe some, I guess, weird plays. I don't, I don't think it was anything too crazy. I think both teams were competing at a high level. Uh, you know, the atmosphere is great. I think both teams were, I mean, we're in the same position. They're trying to get in the play just like us. Uh, you know, so every minute counted, you know, every second counted. And I was just, I think it was just a testament to two teams just really, you know, going at it and battling. Uh, but, you know, Draymond filing out was unique for us. We needed that. Uh, and guys kind of cooling down too. So we can't act like Steph didn't make 93s before he came in tonight. So him missing a few helps too. And uh, with the win, you guys moved into sole possession of the 10th spot, which is, um, you know, the final play in tournament spot, you know, the playing tournaments, a new concept. Um, I'm just wondering, you know, how, how do you view that the 10th spot, the play in tournament and, you know, has maybe your view of that evolved as this season has gone on and you guys have been through so much to get here. Uh, I mean, it'd be new. It'd be an adjustment for everybody, but regardless of where the chips may land, uh, you know, we'll be ready to go. Uh, I mean, that's that's just a matter of control of what we can. You know, we can't worry about other teams, you know, ahead of us and behind us. You know, we can only focus on what we do and what we can control night in and night out and who we play. Uh, and we're going to keep doing that. Hopefully we can keep winning and moving up and getting to the AFC if possible. But, you know, if, if not, you know, we will be in the play and ready to go. So it'll be different. It's an adjustment. Uh, but it's what we signed up for, so we got to be ready to go. And last question to Christos. Brad, congratulations on the win. How how important was the way that you react on the, especially in the last six minutes of the game, and how important is to maintain that effort to the next games? Uh, it's always important. Uh, you know, just constantly building on what what you had success on. You know, it's it's very easy to kind of get away from that. Uh, good teams stick with it and keep doing it. Uh, and I think that's what we're starting to develop ourselves into. And we're being better with it. You know, we understand that defense is going to win us our games. And uh, offensively, it's just a matter of us honestly being healthy. Uh, we feel like we push the ball. We feel like we can score the ball. That's never been a problem with us, I don't think, ever. Um, so it's just a matter of us having the will and the want to, you know, to be able to get it done on the defensive end. And I think that's been our biggest adjustment is making sure that we do that night in and night out. Because uh, that's something we can't control. How satisfied you are about about the way that you play on the court at this point of the season? Uh, I think it's great. You know, we're we're really playing well together. Uh, you know, a lot of guys getting their legs back under them. Minute restrictions are gone. Uh, you know, we're guys acclimated to the playbook. So it's 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 coming full circle for us, and it's kind of crazy. It's a little late later than what we want, but, um, you know, it's, it's definitely a good time for us to be able to get on the road right for the offs. Awesome.